Greetings and welcome to Lizard Creations. For this video, I'm going to turn an ash and grain bowl and then I'm going to apply Lichtenberg patterns to the outside of it using high voltage. I hope you enjoy the video. Before I can start doing any pyrography, I have to create the outer shape of my bowl. I begin by slowly removing the bark starting at one end and working my way back. The bark is well attached. The tree was cut down in late fall, so the cambium wasn't actively growing and there was very little moisture in the phloem. Once I remove the bark and I get down to solid wood, I can start shaping the bowl. This bowl has a wider base and a narrow top. There will also be live edge on each side of the base of the bowl. Once I've completed shaping the bowl, I will then proceed with the sanding. Because this is a flat surface, I'm able to use an orbital sander. I typically use 150 grit or 220 grit, and I rotate the lathe at between 50 and 150 RPM. I hold the sander below center line so the dust is propelled away from me by the rotation of the lathe. Once I've completed the sanding, I can now proceed with the pyrographics. I have already burnt three lines onto the bowl with a wire on the lathe. I'm applying the baking soda and water solution to the area I'm going to do my first burn. Once I've finished applying my water and baking soda solution, I will position my probes on the surface of the wood. Note that I'm a safe distance away and I'm nowhere near the probes while I'm positioning them. Safety is paramount when working with high voltage and doing Lichtenberg burns. If you want to learn more about my system and how I've made it safer, you can always check out my Lichtenberg pyrography safety video. It's time to energize the system, turn up the voltage and start the first burn. I always start with the voltage set to zero and I will change it and modify it in accordance to how the wood is burning. A high voltage will cause a deeper, faster burn, and a low voltage will be a shallow, slower burn. The burn that I'm currently doing is at a low voltage, so it will transition across the wood fairly slowly until it gets close to each other, at which point I will shut the voltage off in order to prevent a high current situation and a deep burn. Note that I'm wearing rubber gloves now that I have the system plugged in and it's in use. I continue to apply my water and baking soda solution to the areas that I want to burn next. I will try to control the direction of the burn by how I position my probes. I find that burning side grain is much easier than burning end grain. I have better control burning the side grain and that influenced the design of this bowl. I turned an end grain bowl so that I would have side grain around the outside of the bowl. I will complete the bowl by applying baking soda and water solution to the areas I want to burn and by positioning the probes in such a way that they will control the direction of the burn. As you've probably guessed, I've accelerated the video so that we can save time and get on to the next step. Once the burning has been completed, you have to scrub the soot off. I use a stiff plastic brush and water. The water does get pretty dirty, so I do have to change it and put in fresh water. 
Once the soot has been removed, I dry it off with a paper towel. This is ash wood, which has a tendency to crack. So I'm wrapping it in plastic to slow the drying process until I'm ready to core the bowl. Once the moisture from the burning and cleaning process had dissipated, I gave the bowl a waste to provide it with more character. The bowl is now ready for its final sanding before it receives its first coat of epoxy resin. I apply a generous first coat of epoxy resin so that it can soak in and seal the wood. After the resin has cured for 24 hours, I can begin to core the bowl. Since I'm turning end grain, for the rest of the bowl, I use my homemade carbide dip scraper to finish the hollowing. The next step is to sand the inside before I apply the epoxy resin to the inside of the bowl. I apply a generous coating of epoxy resin to the inside of the bowl so that it can soak in and seal the wood. After the epoxy resin has cured for 24 hours, I will lightly sand it and prepare it for the second coat. I wipe it down with a microfiber cloth to remove any dust. The second and third coats of epoxy resin do not have to be as thick since they do not soak into the wood. Each time that I apply a coat of resin, I watch for bubbles and I pop them with a torch. The third coat of resin is applied in the exact same fashion as the second coat was applied. I sand lightly first and then I put a thinner coat of epoxy resin on for the final coat. Now that the bowl is finished, I can seal the base where my logo is applied with epoxy resin. If you'd like to learn more about the system that I used to do the pyrography in this video, please check out my Lichtenberg pyrography safety video. It goes into detail on each of the components and provides you with insight and how I have tried to make it as safe as possible for myself. Now that the bowl is finished, I can showcase two of my wife's paintings as per my usual format. The first is Peekaboo, which is a watercolor. 
And the second is Jungle King, which is an acrylic. To check out our other paintings, you can always go to our website, lizartcreations.com. Thank you.